Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, it's so nice to be home a morning for a change. Nice to have you home, Mrs. Norton. Wasn't it sweet of Mr. Varney not to call me for rehearsal this morning? Mm Mm-hmm. I can spend it until lunchtime with you and the baby. Now, that's a fine song for a budding actress to sing. Well, I was a budding wife and mother first. Oh. It's nice being an actress for a change, but it's nice not being an actress for a change, too, if you know what I mean. Yes, anything for a change. I think I'll come over and breathe down the back of your neck. Change. That's what you think. Get <laughs> away from me. But this is your vacation. What's that got to do with it? You don't have to always be doing something. Sit still. Let me breathe down the back of your neck. Are you sure you don't have rehearsal this morning? Positive. You have no chance of getting rid of me, none at all. No, I was afraid of that. David, what is it about being an actress? What is what? Well, I mean, is it a bug? That's one way of describing it. The bug certainly bites an awful lot of people. <laughs> I guess at one time or another, every person wants to go on the stage. You too? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, I'm not so different. I think you are very different. I think you're unique. Then hark, hark. When I was seven, the bug bit me. No. Mm, but I didn't get much of a welt from it. The itch subsided rapidly. No scars? Not a one. Well, why didn't the welt subside with me? Oh, because being an actress is your calling. I hear it calling me. I hear it calling you. I think we should have been a vaudeville team. (laughs) I'm perfectly satisfied with being an architect and a father. And a gentleman. I wonder if Mama ever got bit. She was the hand that fed you, wasn't she? Oh, David, honestly. You know, I thought I was so different wanting to be an actress. Well, don't fool yourself. Or maybe I'm not different. Or maybe I'm not an actress. Well, go study your part. That's proof of the pudding. I'm on a vacation this morning with you. As Benjamin Franklin would have said, all work and no play makes poor Richard a dull fellow. Oh, fooey on work and fooey on dull Richard. I'd rather go play with the baby. Do you want him to be ashamed of you next Monday night? Next Monday night. Mm. Next Monday night? Is it that soon? Certainly is. <gasps> Only six more days till we open? Count them. I'll never be good enough in six more days. Well, that's too bad. David, are you getting nervous about it? Not a bit. Not at all? Not a little bit? I'm not the one who's getting up on that stage. Why should I be nervous? Well, you're related to me. Only by marriage. Oh, I better work. But it's such a beautiful day out. And you're not nervous. Just look at it. The sun all over the place. Why don't you uh, rehearse (sighs) outside? That's an idea. David, listen, you're not going to stay inside in this weather, are you? All right, I'll come with you. And as long as you're coming with me, you might as well kill me. Well, I had hoped to get some of my own work done this morning. Just a half hour? Half hour. All right, all right. For the family honor to preserve the dignity of the Norton name, I will kill you. Good. I'm ever so grateful. Mm, Kiss the hand. No, no fooling. You should have been the actor in this family, David. Come on, let's go out. Come on. You know your whole part by heart? I most certainly do. Just wait and see. Oh, anybody could act in this weather. Makes me feel marvelous. All right, now let's get down to business. There's our friend the crow. Willie the crow. Good morning, sir. David, look, he sat down in that big oak tree. He's going to watch. (laughs) He's waiting for the performance. Oh, I don't want to work at all, at all, at all. I just want to have a little vacation with you. You're awfully sweet this morning. I am not sweet, and later don't say I didn't warn you. You can't have your cake and eat it, too, you You're know. my cake. Come here, I'll bite off your ear. Get away mm, from delicious. me. Delicious. Think of your son, Mrs. Norton. How embarrassed he'll be if you're not a uh, fine, splendid actress on you're next right, Monday night. You're right, you're so right. All right, come on. Begin, commence, start. Which act? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, let's do the second act. I have a great, big, beautiful second speech in the second Coming act. Up. It's almost a whole page long. Uh, let's see. Here we Very are. Very hard. Here we are now. Here's your cue. Mm. Now, Anne, tell me all about it. I wish you were the leading man. That is not the speech. Still wish you were the leading man. 
The leading man at the theater has no character, no umph, no chin. That is still not your speech. So it isn't, so it isn't, so it isn't. Give me my cue again now. All right, here it goes. Now, Anne, tell me all about it. Ah, uh, let's see. I'll tell you all about it. And, Guy, um... Please. Now, please don't interrupt me. There is something I've been wanting to tell you for a long, long time. Right. Um, oh, God. When we... Sake. No, wait, don't tell me now. When we met last night, I knew that nothing in the world could ever stop me from loving you. I love everything about you. I love the way you walk, the way you light a cigarette. Or when you get angry, your lips turn white. The way you whisper my name. I don't care what happens to me or to anything else, because wherever I am or wherever you are, there'll always be this. I love you. Oh, David, I really do. Oh, oh, that was pretty good. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh Mr. Tucker, we didn't know you were there. Good morning. <laughs> I interrupted a little love scene, did I? Well, don't mind me. Go right on. Well, I, I was only pretending. Pretending? Huh? Oh. You can't pull wool over these eyes. Nope, they see too bright. Well, you don't... The way you look at that husband of yours, Mrs. Norton, you ain't pretending. No, I guess you were pretty <laughs> convincing, darling. Especially in the love scene. There's such fun to do. Pretty words, they was. Took me back to when I last went courting. About ten years ago. <laughs> That I can't go around letting Mr. Tucker think I make love to you with the, the, the crow watching. Speak up, speak up. Can't stand folks at whisper. Mr. Tucker, David and I were just rehearsing a scene from the play I'm, I'm, I'm appearing in at the Eastbrook Summer Theater, you know. You an actress? Well, that's what we're going to find out next Monday. You, uh, you don't look like no actress to me. That's good. Next Monday, hey? Mm -hmm. Well, that sure is news. Never thought you'd uh, be one to take up with them there summer theater folks that hang up around here when the corn is high. Well, it was something of a shock. <laughs> well, as long as you don't mind who you associate with, Jared Tucker ain't going to mind. Here, I brung you over some of my corn. <laughs> well, that's, that's mighty thoughtful of you, Mr. Tucker. I grow a special line of white corn regular on the cob as a set of false teeth. Oh, sounds lovely. <laughs> so I brung some over to you. Uh, put your corn to shame, it will. I don't doubt it. Mm, I love corn. It'll stand you in good stead if you're going to be involved in theatricals, Mrs. <laughs> Norton. Actor folks say all think they're killers. Set themselves apart from everybody else. Come up here for the summer for two months and walk around as if they owned the place. I never could see them. Well, they're not as bad as they seem. Come down to East Brook in shorts. Ladies all showing off as much as they dare show off. Ain't got so much to show off, neither as far as I can see. And I can see pretty far. <laughs> and the men actors, well, they might be actors, but I ain't so sure about the rest. I don't hold it against Claudia, Mr. Tucker. She's still a country girl at heart. Why, that bunch of professionals. I could teach them a few tricks. I could. Do yes, you go but... to the theater often? I should say I don't. Pay my good money to see a couple people pretending to be what they ain't. I don't hold with that stuff. I don't. I can do my own pretending and, and do it pretty good, too. David, the bug bit him, too. Mm, a big welt, I'll bet. <laughs> Matter of fact, I used to be quite a hand at recitations when I was a lad. Folks used to say around this here part of the country, they used to say, Jared Tucker has a golden tongue. Really? And you know, gold is gold, and the older it gets, the golder it gets. <laughs> <laughs> Value don't fluctuate. Yes, I, I, I can still recite if I had a mind to. Oh, I'd love to hear you. Uh, oh. Don't coax me. If you coax me, it won't do it. Oh, oh we, we wouldn't dream of coaxing you, but we'd love to have a sample of your art, Mr. Tucker. Oh, I used to stand up with a bow tie around my neck and recite, The Boy Stood on the Burning Deck. Oh. Tears used to flow down my mother's wrinkles. Yes, I'll bet they did. What other recitations did you do? Oh, I couldn't begin to count them. Love sonnets. Guess they was my meat most. <laughs> Love sonnets. You're always best at what you know the most about. You Come know. on, Mr. Tucker. Please give us a sample. Oh, don't know I'm in such good voice this morning. Uh -huh. <coughs> well, guess you would kind of like to see how I've improved with oh, age. Good. Come... Not that I'm old, mind you. No, far from oh, it. Far from it. Uh, how would you like a small portion from the rhyme of the ancient mariner? Oh, I love that poem. Well, then hold on to your seats, because it's a mighty sad tale. Yes, sir. The <clears throat> rhyme of the ancient mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge in seven parts. Let's sit down, David. I think we'd better. <clears throat> Don't know as I remember all seven parts, but the taste is as good as a tipple. <laughs> Part one, verse one. 
It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long gray beard and glittering eye, now wherefore stopst thou me? Uh, me, me, let, let me see. Uh, guess I uh, got a couple of verses here. Oh, yes, sir. Well, this is, this is the part I always like best. <clears throat> day after day, day after day, we stuck no breath nor motion. As idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. So that's where that line came from. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. <coughs> Guess you could stand a couple of drops now. Well, Mr. Tucker, there's no doubt about it, but you have real talent for the theater. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. I always knew I had ever since I was a toddling lad. Mm -hmm. I got half a mind to brush up on a few of my recitations. Man with a hose, boy stood on the burning deck. Yep, maybe we will. Good. Then we can gather a few folks around one evening, and I'll, I'll do them a recitation. Well, you be sure and invite us, Please. huh? Yep, I, I could teach them actors a few things. So if you need some help with your acting, Mrs. Norton, don't be shy. Just call me over. Remember, I'm your neighbor, and we neighbors got to help each other. That's a good motto. And it's the truth. I help you, and you help me. But I, I doubt if there's anything I could ever do to help you, Mr. Tucker. Well, uh, come to think of it, there might be. I, uh, I've been ruminating. Uh, might find me a spot in that there uh, theatrical of yours. Mr. Tucker, there's always room for a handsome leading man. Oh. And Mrs. <laughs> Norton, now perhaps you'll believe my recitation. Everybody wants to go on the stage. Oh, David, I guess I'm not so different after all. The theater bug bites us all. <laughs> I guess Mr. Tucker and I are bitten brothers under the skin. Oh, uh, I can play love scenes, too. I'm right good at love scenes. Do you find housework more tiring in warm weather? Then give yourself a recess occasionally. Go to the refrigerator, get out an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola. You'll find its delicious refreshment helps you tackle the next job more amiably. Take a tip from folks who work in factories and offices. They've long since discovered that you work better when you work refreshed. Say, uh, you ever been bitten by the bug, Mr. King? Bitten by the bug? Yeah. Uh... Uh. Oh, I sure have, I guess, Mr. Tucker. Way back in my mind someplace, I guess I still fancy myself as an actor. Well, between you and me, son, we frustrated this pinions, got it way over them professionals. They don't know nothing about the art of pretending. You got to do a heap more pretending in, 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 in real life than in any theatricals. <laughs> well, I think you have something there, Mr. Tucker. Why, tomorrow, when Mrs. Norton gets interviewed to the local weekly... She puts on a show that would get her raves on Broadway. Yep. Well, I'll be around tomorrow to see for myself. Thanks for the tip, Mr. Tucker, and so long. Oh, so long, Mr. King. Uh, see you in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.